Hi everyone, Kat here with another minific inspired by my latest Legends Arceus shiny catch. I thought it'd be fun to do a twist on Vess's character. She's mostly an unknown in the game, all we know is that she's originally part of Spiritomb, and the little kid we talked to is some kind of facade. So I decided to explore what it would be like if she was a straight up classic villain, with the other spirits mostly innocent. Anyway, here we go, hope you enjoy. Everyone has those moments they'd redo if given the opportunity. For Indigo, it was his decision to seek a vision from one of Spiritomb's ghosts while riding through the sea on a noble prone to vanishments. The vision might have been quite insightful, and yet, as its images faded, Indigo felt like he was sinking. That a weight bore down on his chest, and no matter how hard he tried, he couldn't catch a breath. Panic clouded his mind, but not simply his own. Instead, the hundred-plus voices of Spiritomb rose up in a cacophony of debate over how he'd sunk into the water, whose fault this was, and what to do next. A sharp whistle cut through the muffled noise, and the pressure on Indigo's chest eased as something yanked him backwards. Had he been pulled to shore? But he didn't feel wet. In fact, his body felt like it had no weight at all. He blinked several times. A scruffy-looking man in old-fashioned clothing stood nearby. Around the both of them was nothing but fog. The man noticed him and leapt back. Oh, shoot! He cried in a painfully loud voice. You're, like, actually here with us! A neater but equally old-fashioned-looking woman stepped out from the fog. Don't shout, you fool! she said in a softer but sterner voice before turning to Indigo. So sorry for the scare. I'm Hush, as you may recall from our previous conversation. This charming soul is my brother, Rush. Indigo nodded slowly. You're two of Spiritomb's ghosts. If I'm seeing you, that means... Indeed, your body is in danger, but do not worry. The group of us will manifest to Spiritomb and alert the nearby Pokemon to save you. Uh, my sister and I both trained Cricketot, Rush cut in. I know their descendants live around here. We'll call them. Indigo struggled to answer. The words sort of made sense, but he felt so woozy. Thankfully, Rush lived up to his name and did not wait for a reply. He grasped Indigo's left hand while his sister grabbed the right. Then the chorus of voices rose up again as a small crowd of people emerged from all around, joining hands in a circle. The fog grew thicker and thicker until Indigo could see nothing at all. The sensation of being light on his feet didn't leave, but the pressure on his chest did. When his surroundings grew clear again, he found himself hovering above the shoreline near the Grand Tree Arena. Had Basculegion really carried him this far- Wait, hovering? What was this? The world was bathed in an ethereal purple light. Indigo soon realized he wasn't merely light on his feet. His feet didn't exist. In this moment, he was nothing more than a floating purple flame, one wisp in a group of nine dozen. Panic flooded him again, but this time a surrounding calm suppressed it. A hundred plus reassurances he would be okay. He didn't like it, this feeling of his own will being shoved around in a crowd. But the group urged him to let them take the lead this time. Acting as one was difficult enough. Indigo relented, and the panic ebbed away. His thoughts and actions flowed with the groups like a splash of hot water in a cold stream. One split second of contrast that soon dissipated. Please, help us! Spiritomb's cry pierced the night like a howling wind, and someone answered. As Rush had predicted, there was a Cricketot nearby that found his voice familiar. The little one couldn't rescue Indigo's body on its own, but it was able to call Riolu for help. The fighting type swam out, eager to prove itself, then nabbed Indigo's arms and pulled until his body was safely out of the water. Spiritomb gave a grunt and forced itself to the shoreline as well, the odd keystone scraping with each tug over the rocks. The effort mentally exhausted the ghosts, and their troubles were hardly over. So, you can form Spiritomb with the others, said a sharp voice that would have sent a chill down their collective spines, if ghost Pokemon had such things. Spiritomb looked up to see a woman with long, jet-black hair standing amongst the trees. Vessa, done disguising yourself as a child? The Pokemon asked. For now, she said in a bored tone. Don't worry. I won't kill your newest member here. I have a feeling it'll be easier to oust his spirit from the keystone if he's alive. But I can't say I'm pleased with any of the Pokemon actively helping him. Her gaze flashed to the side. The helpful Cricketot scampered away from her, but its tiny legs had no chance to carry it out of range fast enough. With a snap of Vess's fingers, Cricketot vanished from sight and reappeared half embedded in a tree. It squealed in terror and confusion, which Vessa only giggled at. Save it if you like, 
she said to Spiritum. We'll chat later, and don't worry. I'll make sure I'm back with all of you soon. Spiritum wanted to attack her, but there was no chance of winning. So, the ghost retreated to the odd keystone and released Indigo's spirit back to his body. Indigo woke with a gasp. Everything hurt. Everything felt heavy. But those sensations could only mean one thing. He was still alive. He got to his feet quickly as he could and hurried to help Cricketot. He wasn't sure how at first, but throwing several Pokeballs at the tree threw off Vess's spell and Cricketot was soon free. The little Pokemon first bolted in fear and dove into a pile of leaves. But then, after a moment, it seemed to call to him, asking to join his travels. Maybe it didn't look strong, but it had many friends. It would help however it could. When the Pokemon re-emerged from the leaves and ran around with its fellows, it appeared in Indigo's mind to have a golden shimmer. But maybe that was just from the rising sunlight breaking through the clouds. In any case, he readied a Pokeball and threw it. Cricketon happily went inside. Welcome to the team, Indigo said. We've got our work cut out for us. That'll wrap up this story. I have given some thought to what to do with all these shinies, and I'm going to try a giveaway on Reddit first with Shiny Carnivine. I'd like to keep Spiritum and Vulpix for myself, at least for now. If that goes smoothly, I'll set up the giveaways here on YouTube next time. Thanks for listening, and as always, happy reading and happy training!